Hi everyone and welcome to today's story time. We're going to be reading The Cucumber Princess by Jan Wall, illustrated by Karen Carraway. The Cucumber Princess for Elena with Love. One frosty morning, sorry, in a dry, parched kingdom, Kukuru, the rag picker, crossed a cucumber field. She stopped. There, among wizened vines, she found an egg freshly laid. She wrapped it up, carrying it to her hut, which sat among sunflower stalks. Placing it on some straw, she said, Maybe it can be hatched. Anyway, it will make a fine breakfast. But the next morning, she awoke to hear a tiny girl stepping out of the egg, pulling shell out of her hair that was yellow as corn. Good morning, said the tiny girl. Kukuru gasped and fainted. The tiny girl quickly shook the rag picker awake, begging, I've got important business. Take me to the king. I have a child only one day old and already she must see the king. What a new generation muttered the old woman, wrapping the girl in her best rag and carrying her to Tataco Apop, king of the eagles and the wind. She sat admiring his own wonderful tattoos. What do you want, he asked. To rule your kingdom, shouted the girl, sizing him up. I'm stronger than you. The king roared with laughter. And his guards and chamberlains laughed too. They were certain that he, a man, was stronger. Let's see, I'll go like this. Ho oh, then, pick up this large jade stool, said the king. Kukuru started to run forward to stop the headstrong girl. However, very easily, the tiny girl picked it up, puffing just a bit. A black rook on a perch behind the thorn giggled. Hmm, said the king, stroking his beard. Can you build a greater palace than mine? Surely nobody could do that. Yes, cried the tiny girl. For, he, for she had set her mind to it. The rag picker scuttled off to her hut, shaking her head. I will never understand these new children. Well, on the day next, or the next day, Totoko Apop rubbed his eyes and looked out the window. Where an empty field had been there stood a magnificent new palace. Not only was it bigger than his old one, of which he was so proud, but it was better than that palace which a hundred architects and artisans had slowly built. Where does she get her strength? He wondered and felt his own muscles. The whole day he marched back and forth, fretting, until that night, he told his guards. Toss the wench into the mud caked lake. Now I'll be stronger. But instead they threw a corn husk that she had cleverly put on her bed. Where she was hiding, she laughed. Seize her, growled the angry king. The tiny girl leaped from their big hands as if oiled and ran, calling fishes to make a wiggling raft to take her safely across the lake. On the far bank, she escaped by clinging to a scared tortoise. 
The guards chased after her. At once, she clutched the tail of a crouching, surprised jaguar who sped into the, into the brambles and thorns. Soon, the guards got out of breath and were lost. Grumbling, they stumbled back. She sat among the dry reeds. What should she do? A woodpecker hopped and hopped along reeds. The tiny girl climbed on his back. Go, she commanded. He jerked hard but could not throw her off. Below, she saw cracked hot earth and buzzards waiting and tired women carrying buckets of water from near empty wells. She saw men dressed in feathered or painted clothing, doing silly owl and centipede dances to bring rain. She saw the coyote and rabbit thirsty. Funny, she sighed. This king wishes to be strongest in a dying land. The woodpecker was able to fly no more and alighted. The girl stood still in an empty field, pushing small toes into the soil. Rain started falling. She soon started growing. While she stood, Sparrows nested in her hair. Foxes and deer slept by her feet. Birds of many kinds came. While she was rooted there, she asked herself, what am I? Why am I here? The wind blew, yet she stood firm and the beasts and birds snuggled close and she learned how to grow and love and give warmth. Each morning, old Kukuru awoke and wandered, doing rag picking, but he wished, sorry, but she wished again, she could find a freshly laid egg and from it a tiny girl would spring. If it happens again, she said to herself, I will do whatever she wishes. I will share my hut and everything I have. Of course, there was little to share. The rag picker walked until she happened to find the girl grown into a tall green lady in the middle of a field. Pull me, said the fine lady, whom poor Kukuru failed to recognize. The rag picker pulled and yanked and groaned and out came the lady. Why don't you come home with me, suggested the old woman. Silently, the two of them walked to the rag picker's house among sunflowers. The only food in the hut was a pot with three fried cactus cakes. Kukuru served them proudly, but the fine green person shook her head, sighing, I only eat cucumbers. And winked. The rag picker shook her old brain until the tiny image of a girl jumping out of an egg danced in her head, crying, you are my cucumber child. The old woman leaped into the air, hugging the tall lady who this time gave back lavishly the old woman's affection. I am, I am, smiled the lady, and the two talked until the shadows of the night. In the morning, Kukuru rose early, afraid if only a dream, but there was the lovely, creature standing in a shaft of bright morning light. She was chewing a cucumber and asked, will you take me to the king? Nodding, the old woman hung a rag veil on her cucumber child to hide her beauty and off they stepped. Totoko Apop was not in the old palace, but in the new one. He sat idly in his gorgeous throne, listening to a band of clothed monkeys playing songs. The rag picker entered with the lady. When the veil was removed, Toko Apop fell to his knees, cracking his shins on the base of the throne. It was love at first sight. What can I do for you? Obviously, he did not recognize her as the tough, tiny girl. 
The guards surrounded her since they worried about the king losing his strength. Coolly, she pushed her way through them, pointing. Please lift this large jade stool. Under his breath, Totoko Apop snorted. Even a child can lift that. Grunting and straining, he tried, but could not budge it. The mysterious figure walked around softly, saying, Can you build me a greater palace, mister, than this? This, shouted the king, the most magnificent ever built? He grew purple, then red, remembering a wee child had built it. Kukuru began creeping away in all, on all fours out of the room, shaking her ancient head. Nervously, Totoko Apop pulled his beautifully curled beard and felt his muscles. He also reached for his scepter, but it had rolled across the floor. Who are you? He asked her in quite a small voice. Both the tall lady and he realized he was not the stronger and she loved him then for showing real weakness. The mysterious person took one of the monkeys as a babe in her arms, whispering low, I am she who makes the rain fall. I am she who turns the corn ripe. I am she who gives. Together, together, we can both make a powerful kingdom. She held his hand and he knew the promise was true. At that instant, there was a wild stroke of lightning and a great black roll of thunder. Butterflies burst from the dusty, sleeping, pale cocoons and thronged the air. A heavy blue rain beat down. Seeds in the parched ground cracked open. New leaves murmured. Grain stalks rustled. Flowers bloomed. The people who had been hiding ran forth to see what was happening. The king and the cucumber princess learned to rule together and their kingdom and their children were weak and strong and Kukuru was made keeper of the butterflies. The end. I hope you loved that story. Thank you for listening to the cucumber princess.